Stay all day. Stay all day. Stay all day. Now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to occur. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is why successful people always operate by systems. Why you will notice if you are a successful person you'll notice that most of what you do is operating by a system if you are not a successful person you're on your way you're on the cusp of success you will notice that you are probably starting to use systems to get to that success and if you are not a successful person at all and you're not even on your way to being successful if you look around at people who are you'll notice that they're all operating by systems I'm going to sell you on this concept of systems uh, I'm either going to sell you or you're going to die, whichever one happens first. All right, so that's why we talk about systems so much here on the show. But before we get into that, let me tell you one. I have a daily motivation text message that I send out free of charge every single day to everyone who is in my text community. If you would like to receive this message that is guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point, all you got to do is text me at my number, which is 305-384-6894. And every day when I send that message out, because you are in my text community and for no other reason, you're going to receive that message. Secondly, if you have not yet claimed your free copy of my newest book called The Third Day, The Decision That Separates the Pros from the Amateurs. Actually, this is not my newest book. I've actually published other books since then, but this is the last one that I put out as brand new and kind of did a whole launch around it. But there are other books I make. Sometimes I don't put make big launch ideas around them, but this one's the latest one. If somebody asked me, I would say this one. The Third Day, the book is free. All you're going to do is cover the shipping. This book is all about how you show up and give your best effort when you least feel like it. If you do not have this book yet, Go to thirddaybook.com. The book is free. All you're going to do is cover the shipping, and I will ship you a physical copy of that book to your physical doorstep, P.O. Box business, wherever you want to receive it. And third, if you have not yet watched my free 45-minute training, five things business professionals do to increase their revenue without having to work harder to make more money, there is a way to do it, and the, the way to do it is to make qualitative changes instead of quantitative. I'll explain to you exactly how to do that and the system behind it. Go to workonyourgame.net. The training is completely free. All we ask for is your time, 45 minutes. Put that aside to watch that training. Again, it's at workonyourgame.net. Now let's get into this topic here today because now that we're all clear on what actually denotes and what constitutes a system, which is what we covered in yesterday's episode. If you didn't listen to that one, go listen to yesterday's episode. And since I'm talking about systems all the time, let me sell you then even further on the idea of why the most successful people you know and the most successful businesses you know of all operate by systems. And even though I have told you at times that there are times where you should look around at what everybody is doing and not do it because most people are average by definition, we're not talking about the average here today. What are we talking about? What's the title of today's episode? Why successful people operate by systems. So we're already talking about a select group of people and a select group of organizations. So when you see the successful people doing something, you should notice that because the success leaves clues. There are certain things that successful people are doing that everybody else ain't doing. And you should notice what are the things, that, what are the commonalities you notice amongst successful people. And once you identify what some of them are, you should actually start doing them. Or you should figure out if you're already doing them, how you can do more of them. And if you're not doing them, it should be a, a five alarm emergency to make sure that you start doing it. All right, so now that we're clear on that, let's talk about it. Point number one, today's topic once again is why all successful people operate by systems. Number one, no high level performer who you can name, not a single one of them, wings it. What does winging it mean? Winging it means that like, for example, when I do this show, I have notes in front of me. I have notes on what my points will be. So I have point number one, point number two. I'm just trying to think how many points I have for today's episode. Point number, I think I got three points here. Yeah, three points for today's episode. I know what my points are. I don't just turn on the mic and just, just start uh, talking off the top of my head. I plan ahead for what I'm going to be talking about. Now, I do not lay this out word for word. I'm not reading off a transcript, but I do have a framework for what I'm going to be saying. If I give a professional speech at an event, I have a framework for what my speech is going to be. If I'm on a sales call with somebody and I'm going to 
uh, sell you on the concept of, let's say, working with me or getting into a product or a program that I'm running, I have a framework for how that call is going to go. I'm not just randomly having a conversation with you. I know how I want that conversation to move along to the point of getting you to make a decision, which is the smart decision, which is working with me with whatever it is that I'm offering. I have a framework for all of that stuff. I don't just, I don't just wing it and try to go off a of talent and look and hope that things work out. No high level performer does that, at least not consistently. All sustained excellence, ladies and gentlemen, is planned. Let me say that one more time. All sustained excellence is planned, meaning it does not just randomly happen just because someone wanted it to happen. And you need to ask yourself, are you making plans for your sustained excellence? It's a simple question. It may not be a simple answer for you. It may be a complicated answer for you, but you should ask the question. If you are a talented enough individual and you have timing on your side, you can create success, maybe even a substantial amount of success, just off of talent and timing alone. However, if you want your success to be sustained, consistent, predictable, and long lasting, you need a system that allows you to replicate that success over and over again. Especially when you're in a competitive field where other people are trying to beat you at the very thing that you're successful at. Because you won't be able to continue to win and continue to beat the field off of talent alone. Especially, again, when you're in a competitive field, that's not gonna work. Because nobody's talented enough to just keep beating everybody without plans and consistency and discipline. Look at professional sports, for example. You have to have a certain level of talent to even get a chance in the first place. But the ones who last the longest in professional sports are the ones who not only have talent, but they come up with a system for continually being good and continually improving at their game. So they're enhancing their talent through the system of continuous, never-ending improvement. Those who are merely playing off of talent alone, they don't last long, or at least they won't last long in being good. Maybe they'll be able to keep a job. You're talented enough, you may be able to keep a job, but are you gonna keep a job and actually be getting better and improving? Probably not. You'll become a certain type of performer in that space and you are who you are, you're not getting any better and you're just the same person for 10 years straight. Some people, if you're talented enough, that can work for you and you can have a career, but to actually improve steadily, you gotta have you gotta be having you have to be doing it intentionally and consciously. There has to be a purpose and there has to be a process behind doing it. So you look at someone like a LeBron James, very talented individual. Kobe Bryant, very talented. Michael Jordan, very talented performers. But I want you to understand that at during each one of these guys' eras in playing professional sports, there were other players in their league who had comparable talent, comparable physical attributes and abilities. They are not the only ones in the world with their set of physical attributes and abilities. Now, there's not a ton of people who have it, but there are some others who have it. They're not the only ones who had it. The reason why these are the guys who stand out and they're the names that everyone knows, even if you're not a basketball watcher, is because these guys had a process, a system, for continually improving their games, even though they were already good enough to be in the top 1% of performers in the world at their job and you should be thinking the exact same way about yourself what process do you have in place or multiple processes do you have in place that allow you to continually improve and expand your offerings and your game such that you are always getting better and able to produce higher level results because when you produce higher level results since we're in a performance-based business and a results-based business you will get higher level rewards and if that sounds good to you then you should think about all right what process do i have so i can continually get better as an athlete myself i saw a lot of athletes who had uh, a comparable or even higher level of talent than i had but if they didn't have a process for, continu for continually getting better such as working on their games like actually going to the gym outside of practice time uh, working on their bodies doing conditioning exercises, uh, filling in the holes in their games, actually getting better at things that they weren't that great at. If they didn't have a process for doing this, the problem is eventually the field will catch up to you. That's, that's usually what happens because in life, being that there are eight billion people on the planet, nobody's so talented that just on talent alone, you'll always be able to beat everybody. You may be able to beat a lot of people off of your talent alone if you choose the right vocation and you are talented enough. You may be just so much better than everybody else there without even trying, you're just beating everybody. But eventually, as you keep rising, you're eventually gonna come across other people who had the exact same situation in their hometown where they come from. And now you got the best of the best. Now the winner is not gonna be the person who's most talented because everybody's talented. The winner is gonna be the person who has the best process. As I told you that business is not a meritocracy. I told you sometimes it is a systemocracy. Processocracy. 
strategocracy. Who has the best system, the best process, the best strategy? Didn't I tell you that? Uh, not too long ago, let me tell you what episode that was. That was episode, well, first of all, episode 1580, I talked about it for the first time. And the second time I talked about it was in episode number 2341. Business is not a meritocracy, part two. So if you didn't listen to episode 2341, it was just about a month or so ago. Make sure you go check that episode out. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is why successful people always operate by systems. If you notice, they are always doing this. Many of them may not call it a system, but it's absolutely a system. Number two. Amateurs, low-level performers, and those who come and go before they should, those who are out of the game earlier than you would expect them to be out of the game, this happens to these people because of their inconsistencies. This is the main reason why amateurs don't become pros. It's not because they don't have the talent or the desire or the potential or the opportunity. Low-level performers don't stay low-level because they lack, again, talent, desire, potential, or opportunity. And it's the same thing with people who have talent, desire, potential, and opportunity, but don't stick around the game as long as you would think they would. The main reason, it all comes down to the same thing for all three groups. Inconsistency. People are inconsistent. Usually the main reason for someone's inconsistency is that their outputs are not planned and strategized for. In other words, they are not doing the work up front that ensures that their results will be consistent and have very little variation over time. See, you have to do work up front to be able to expect that. To have a certain expectation, you gotta do the work. Uh, if, you wanna, if you expect an apple tree to grow in your backyard, you probably have to plant some apple seeds. I mean, it's a simple enough idea, right? So I can juxtapose two professional athletes who came along when I was around, when I was a teenager in basketball. Uh, let's compare these two guys. Both of them very talented. Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant. Everybody knows who both of these guys are, even if you're not a basketball fan. Now, both of these players were extremely talented players, and both of them had enjoyed substantial amounts of success in their basketball careers. And both of their careers began to tail off around the same point, which was sometime in their mid-30s. Which, for a very talented basketball player, sounds about par for the course. Now, a player who's kind of talented, maybe in your early 30s you start tail off. And a player who's semi-talented, you start tailing off uh, maybe around the time you get 30. And a player who's not that talented at all, you might tail off when you're in your mid-20s. But these guys were both supremely talented, so their, their talent starts to tail off again, their careers, let's say, tailed off around their mid-30s. But let's look at what actually happened here. We go into more detail. When Allen Iverson started to bounce around the NBA, meaning he was going from team to team because nobody really wanted to keep him around and they didn't really want to build around him anymore. And he was no longer this unstoppable force he had once been based on his talent. What was happening to Kobe Bryant at that exact same time? At that same time, when Allen Iverson was starting to go from team to team and not be the hot commodity he had once been, Kobe Bryant at that time was leading his team to the championship round of the NBA playoffs three seasons in a row. And based on performance, Kobe Bryant was still a star not based on reputation, but based on performance. Allen Iverson was still getting treated like a star based on his reputation because of what he had done for 10 years before that point. But Kobe Bryant was still getting treated like a star based on what he was doing in the moment. He was still performing like a high level player in the league, even when his talent was not, his talent was not as, what's the best, better way I can put this? He was playing more off of strategy and skill by this point, Kobe Bryant, in the years that he was taking his team to the NBA Finals three years in a row, then he was playing just off, off of natural abilities. In his early career, when his team went to the Finals three years in a row, and actually four out of five years, Kobe was using his natural abilities in addition to skill. But later on, his natural abilities weren't carrying him anymore. It was all skill and all strategy and all structure that was carrying Kobe Bryant. Those last three times his team went to the NBA Finals round, which was 2008, 2009, and 2010. That was all off of strategy and structure and skill. And at that exact same time period, Allen Iverson's career was starting to tail off. And very quickly, he was completely out of the NBA. And it's well documented and widely believed. Now, again, we don't know this to be absolute fact because Kobe's not around to speak for himself and all we have are stories, but it's well documented and widely believed that Kobe Bryant had a regimented system for continually improving on and maintaining his abilities. And this is, this is a very important point here. And for those of you, you are Allen Iverson fans, everything I'm saying here is true. And if I got anything 
wrong, you let me know. Allen Iverson, on the other hand, was famous for pretty much the opposite of what I just said about Kobe. Kobe had a regimented system for continually improving, working on his game and maintaining his skill level. Allen Iverson was famous for not doing that. Allen Iverson was famous for pretty much uh, showing up to the gym and just being so damn good, he would still give you 30 points. That's what That was Allen Iverson's MO. Now, regardless of what you believe, again, because none of us, I don't think you nor I, was hanging with these guys personally and knows exactly what was taking place. But Allen Iverson was, again, famous for his thing. Kobe was famous for his. Regardless of what you believe, let's look at the results. Because that we can look at. All right, that we don't have to go off, off of anyone's theories. Allen Iverson was dominant because he could overwhelm you with his talent. He was just very damn good. But when his talent was no longer sufficient, he had nothing left. He had no plan B. And he didn't have anything else to go to when his talent couldn't carry him through the day anymore. Kobe dominated with talent as well. Kobe would also overwhelm you with talent. But as Kobe's talent advantage waned and he could no longer dominate with talent, here's what happened with Kobe that didn't happen with Allen Iverson. Kobe Bryant had a plan B. His plan B when he could no longer overwhelm you with talent was, I'm going to beat you with skill. And his skill was based on a system that he had of continually working on his game. And it is it should not be lost on anyone that at one point later in his career, Kobe Bryant, he was a he was signed to Nike as an endorsee, that Kobe Bryant actually had a sneaker that was literally called the Kobe system. There was no sneaker called the Allen Iverson system because there was no Allen Iverson system. The Allen Iverson system was uh, show up to the gym and just be better than everybody. And when that couldn't work anymore, Allen Iverson didn't have a counter. He didn't have a counter plan to that plan. When that plan couldn't work, it was over for Allen Iverson. And I'm a fan of Allen Iverson. It doesn't mean I'm also not a fan of the truth. The truth of Kobe Bryant was he could do that too. But when he couldn't do that anymore, he already had his second plan ready. He was already ready for the next phase, even when that didn't work anymore. And that's why Kobe Bryant's career lasted a lot longer than Allen Iverson's, at least in the NBA. Allen Iverson was a cult hero in basketball and sports and in culture. Was, is a cult hero. I mean, he's still alive because he did what most people, let me tell you, this is a key point right here. Allen Iverson was a cult hero in the culture because he did what most people hoped they would be able to do. You know what most people want to be able to do? They just want to be more talented than everybody, than everybody else and just win just off of that. And so Allen Iverson, the reason he was so popular is because he actually achieved success doing what most people try to do but cannot pull off. Because Allen Iverson just happened to be so talented that he could, without a system, without a process, beat everybody. And he actually pulled it off. Most people want to do that, but they can't do it. They're not as good as Iverson, so they just ended up watching him and loving him because he was able to do it. Kobe Bryant, on the other hand, did the thing that most people need to do but are too lazy to do which is have a system that actually extends your career and allows you to last longer than you probably should have just because the fact that you had a process and a system that allows you to continue being good even when everybody else's talent started to tail off. See, the problem is most people have don't have the kind of talent that Allen Iverson had. Most people don't have Allen Iverson's talent in anything, let alone in basketball. But they want to be able to do what Iverson did. See, they can't pull off the, pull off the Allen Iverson. That's why you didn't, we didn't see an Allen Iverson before Allen Iverson, and we ain't seen one since. And to be honest, we ain't seen a Kobe Bryant either. The thing is, you got to have a certain baseline level of talent to do what either one of these guys did. They both had choices, and they both made their choices. Kobe Bryant, again, had talent, as I said. But he also had the work ethic that allowed him to develop that talent into a skill that allowed him to last much longer than his peers who only had talent. And that work ethic developed that talent into skill. I want you to understand there's a difference between talent and skill. Now many people have many different definitions when it comes to the word talent. I've actually, even over the years, back from my basketball days into later in my basketball days, I changed my opinion on what talent actually means. But the, the definition of talent, if we were to look this up, let me look it up in the dictionary here. Let's just see what the dictionary says about talent. It says, what the hell is this? <laughs> All right, I'm getting the definition of talent here so we can make sure that we're having a, make sure that we're being objective here and using dictionary. Talent says natural aptitude or skill. So let's, let's key in on that word natural. Natural aptitude or skill, because I just use the word skill to kind of juxtapose between talent and they're using skill in the definition. So it's kind of 
uh, Kyle these up the, the point which is why I didn't even put this definition in my notes but I consider talent to be natural aptitudes natural abilities natural that's the key word skill that I'm talking about with the Kobe Bryant is a practice skill it's one that you developed consciously and intentionally talent you cannot develop a talent consciously and intentionally you can enhance a talent you can work on a talent but you cannot make yourself be talented at something you can make yourself skilled at something you cannot make yourself talented Alan Iverson and Kobe Bryant were both naturally talented they both had God-given gifts that the average person even basketball players even myself do not did not and will not have Kobe had the system literally the Kobe system to continue getting better with that talent point number three today's topic once again is why all high performers all successful performers that you can name all operate by system number three so here's what you do plug into a system that produces the results that you're in pursuit of I mean that's it period all people who are consistent at producing results usually have some type of system and often you can even identify what the system is often they'll even tell you what the system is here's the system here's what I do all right you can look up and find out who Kobe Bryant's trainer was when he was in the NBA all right that's part of his system was that he had a trainer it was part of his system Kobe would even talk about this he didn't talk about it a ton he would talk about look I wake up early in the morning I get my conditioning workout in then I go home and eat breakfast then I go back to the gym and I get some shots up then I go home and eat lunch then I go back to the gym and I you know, work on my moves and I go home and eat something else then I come back to the gym and I get more shots up Kobe talked about that as his system that was what I just told you was a system and he would do it over and over and over again every single day the same things the same way every time that's why Kobe is Kobe what was Allen Iverson's system for training and getting better uh, we don't know because there probably wasn't one Listen, I'm a fan of Allen Iverson, but again, let's be honest about the situation. We know who Kobe Bryant's trainer was. Who was Allen Iverson's trainer? We don't know. All right, you can look up and see all the stories about the systems that allow McDonald's, Amazon, Subway to run the way that they do. They're open about what their system is because nobody can beat them at their system. So let me ask you, what's the system of your favorite local pizza joint or the other place that might have good food but doesn't grow or expand? Now, what's the difference between McDonald's, and Amazon, and Subway and your local pizza place? The difference is not the quality of the food, even though there probably is a difference in quality of food. The local place might have better food. But remember, the business is not a meritocracy. Business, business is a systemocracy. The better system wins, not the better quality thing, better quality widget, whatever it is. The good news for everybody is that the system that you need that will help you expand Keeping in mind that business is not a meritocracy, the system you need likely already exists. The system is already out there. You don't even have to create it. All you got to do is plug into it. This is as easy as it gets. The bad news is that the internet has fooled many people into thinking that if you just work hard enough or you are good enough, whatever the hell that means, you'll eventually figure it out. And you're actually right. It's bad news, but you're actually right about the bad news. Here's what you're right about. The problem is eventually figure it out. That word eventually. That might mean 10 years from now, while plugging into a system might only take you 10 weeks or 10 days. So that's why that's bad news, even though you're right about it. See, this is why I talk about getting insights, getting the right people around you so you're not getting the right answers to the wrong questions. All that said, let's recap today's class. This is why successful people always operate by systems. Since we I keep talking to you all about systems and why systems matter so much, I'm going to sell you on the concept of systems even further here today. Point number one, no high-level performer wings it. All sustained excellence is planned. If you are talented enough with timing on your side, you can create success, maybe even a substantial amount of it, but you won't be able to sustain it. If you look at professional sports, you've got to have a certain level of talent just to get in the room, but to stay in the room, you need more than just talent because everybody has talent. Point number two, amateurs, low-level performers, and those who come and go before they should come and go, that happens to them because of their inconsistencies. Remember at the professional level, folks, people do not pay for inconsistency. They don't pay for things that they cannot predict. They don't pay for randomness. We pay for things we know what we're going to get, and we get it every single time. We pay for consistency. So look at Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant, both very talented. Allen Iverson dominated off of talent, and when he couldn't do that anymore, he didn't have a plan B. Kobe dominated off of talent. When he couldn't do that anymore, he already had his plan B ready. He was merging his plan B in while he was still working on plan A. That's why Kobe's career lasted a lot longer than Allen Iverson's. And Kobe was still dominant when Allen Iverson was starting to get uh, cast away by teams who used to say this guy's amazing. Why? Because he didn't have a plan B when his talent 
ran out. It only can take you but so long. The shelf life of that talent does not last forever. So as those advantages wane for both guys, do you have a, another thing that you can go to, which is the system? Kobe had a system. They literally named the sneaker the Kobe system because this guy was a systematic performer and a systematic systematic in the way that he worked on his game and continued to improve himself. Allen Iverson was famous for literally not doing that. And the, the results of what happened at the tail ends of their talent tells the story. Point number three, what do you do then? Plug into a system that produces results that you're in pursuit of. Because all people who are consistent in producing results are doing it by a system. Often they will even tell you what the system is and often the system is very obvious and you can see it for yourself. So you can see who Kobe's trainer was. We don't know who Iverson's trainer was. We know what Kobe's system was. We don't know what Iverson's system was. You look up and see all the stories about the systems that allow Amazon or Subway or McDonald's to run the way that they do. So the good news for you is that the system that you need already exists. You just need to tap into it. The bad news that many people think is that you just work hard enough, you will eventually figure things out. The thing is, you will figure them out, but it might take you 10 times as much time to get to them, to get to the results that you want, than it would if you just plugged into a system. So I would suggest plugging into a system, but you can do what you want. But that said, two things for you to do. First of all, go to workonyourgame.net and plug into a free 45-minute training where I explain to you the system of what we do here at Work On Your Game and how you can apply that to increase the revenue in your business right now. That's at workonyourgame.net. And text me to get my daily motivation message straight to your phone free of charge every morning. My number is 305-384-6894. Work on your game. Dre all day.